Well, they've been waiting for this moment, and now they get it. Round one underway. Solid. Oh, he doesn't look good. He just went down, and not the way he wanted it to go. Now he's standing on the outside, okay. Joe. He shouldn't be standing there. The old timers would say, take a walk around the block. Took some damage, but he gave some back with the right hand. Took a shot, now he gives a left. Unable to score with the uppercut that time. Bulls able to land a good, solid left hand. Able to cover up along the belt line, blocks that one. his target he lands a straight right and right from the start he's throwing the power punches and landing them i think he has a date he wants to get to it final 10 seconds And the round comes to an end. We did have a knockdown in that round. Now, Teddy, if you're in the corner where your man was down on the floor, what are you telling him? Well, the first thing that I do is I sit him down, I get water on the back of his neck. You know, I bring him to a sense, I make sure that he's clear and everything. And then I tell him why he got his backside put on that canvas so he can correct it. And he doesn't go out there and get caught again with the same punch. A thunderous punch, able to land to the head. So he thought he was out of range. He wasn't. See, that's the work they want to see with the right hand by Raging Bull. Halfway through round number two. Come on, that is Boxing 101. A nice, crisp combination by Clubber. Raging Bulls getting himself into the mix now, landing that left hand. Unable to land clean by Raging Bull. Final 10 seconds of round number two. Three is underway. Good solid right hand by Clubber. And you see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. Clubber's doing well here with that two punch combination. Plus shot, it was the overhand left.
Harry brings the jab right hand. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. Halfway through this round here. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Raging Bull's blocking ability is doing well for him there. Hooks, he wide open for the hook. Lands flush with the combination upstairs. Lovers bang by a big uppercut. Takes one, gives one. The right hand scores well. Dismisses his opponent's headshot. He just missed that shot up top. Ten seconds to go in this round. Raging Bull's knowledge of the game is showing through. Three ways to defend. One of them is to block. He did it there well. And that does it for this round. Right. This fight is way too close. And I need you to double up on the jab and follow up with two or three more punches. You need the jab, you understand? Let's take a look at Teddy's scorecard, where you can see that he's only got that one round in the bank so far at the beginning of round number four. But Teddy, just the psychology of the game, knowing that you've put your man down on the canvas, you really don't care about the scorecard at that point. Well, you know you're the boss, and you can continue to be the boss. And more importantly, your opponent now, he's a little concerned about throwing something. He might get caught, he might get hurt again. Gets rid of that. It was intended for his head. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counterpuncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him, he can counter him. Lovers now feeling the after effects of being rocked by a huge hook to the head. 90 seconds to go in round number four. Here's a moment here as you see the step back counter punch where you realize this is the sweet science, not just some raw savagery swinging out there. Look at the little subtleties here, Joe. What he does is he forces them into a position to stop the punch. And then when he stops, steps back, hey, makes hey, a miss, now, and comes right back. Seconds to go in the fourth. Don't fight me, fight me. Jab and move. Listen, you need to mix your punches up. Throw more punches to the body. This is a wipeout. You are winning this fight. You keep doing what you're doing. Back to live action now in what has been a closely contested fight. One of those fights that somebody is still waiting to break through and be a difference maker in. Good return fire that time. Left hand over the top, he's accurate with it. You're not focusing. Jab, jab, jab. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Bang the body, bang the body. Bang Targeting bang, that overhand hey, left. Hey, hey, let's go out there now. Come on now, let me see it. 
Raging Bull's inconsistencies are really showing up now. At times, he has shown defense tonight. Other times, with what we've seen recently, he's getting hit by the left hand. Yeah, what he has to do is now make the adjustment. Halfway through this round. Thought he had his target, but way off to the side with the uppercut. Scored well up top. Raging Bull is able to land a nice, clean left hand. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot, and then comes back with an uppercut. That's what we worked on at the gym. Good job, boy. Good job. Coming to the end of round number five, last ten seconds. And the bell rings, signifying the end of the round. Clubber's cut man is going to earn his pay for sure. That is a bad gash. And I'm wondering what he's using in there. You know, you can only use certain things. Have a team of adrenaline and slumber. I'm wondering if he's using legal things right now because that's the kind of cut that tempts you to use crazy glue. And we are underway for what is the second half of this fight. Who knows what we're in store for. He brings it right back. Big shot upstairs. Well, I think a lot of people probably didn't expect this out of him, but I like the way he looks on the outside. He's an inside man, but guess what? He's got an outside touch. You see how he comes over the top with that left hand. Well placed shot there. Very nice work there. Jab, uppercut. Inside, inside, that's good, good. Keep working, keep working. Little head hunting with the left. Good biting, snapping shot by Raging Bull. Couldn't hit the elusive target with that straight right. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. Lover's right hand scores well. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. And out of nowhere, things can turn like that, Teddy. Everything was looking good, now it's looking bad for him. Well, that's exactly why, because nothing was coming at him. His opponent wasn't thrown back. He got a little lax, and he paid a price. To the body. Good defensive skill with the block by Raging Bull. Get close to him. Close the distance. Sets up that right hand with the jab. Glover showing us a real, real solid skill set here with his head movement. Teddy, how much of that is just natural athletic ability and instincts, and how much of that is being trained well? Well, most of it's trained well. If I take a guy off the street, Joe, and he hasn't been taught anything, he's going to throw punches. But usually, he's not going to have a good defense. That's something that has to be attained. That's something that has to be taught. This guy has been taught good defensive fundamentals. Relax. Relax. You're okay. You are okay. Now keep your hands up. Keep them up. We caught you with your hands now. Let's keep them up, all right? Well, he got caught by a lucky punch in that last round. It did do some damage, but now you can tell he's right back where he wants to be, fresh and ready as we start this round. I don't take lightly when a guy gets stopped, but you know what? I think he was more embarrassed than he was hurt. Beat him to the punch. Come on, Not what he was looking for. That's a miss right there by Raging Bull. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. Good exchange. He fires back. 
You work the body. Work the body, kid. That's right. Body shot. Body shot. Raging Bull's doing a poor job. There's no other way to really say it. I mean, he's sitting there trying to stay committed to being a counterpuncher. But in the meantime, the fight is getting away from him in a big way. Yeah, he needs a plan B right now. You know, he came in with plan A, Joe, but plan B is what he needs. He has to find another way to create offense. He's not going to be able to do it countering on the back end. He missed that uppercut. He did not see that right hand at all. He may want to tie up. He was stunned. Now he's in control. Momentum so critical. And that's the thing about this boxing game. One second you're in control, the next nice second you're not. And now he's acting like a fighter. Coming back with the right hand after getting scored upon. I like that step back right there. Just enough to be out of danger, but still close enough to then lay in the counter punch. Well, that's what happens when you have that kind of experience. You're calm enough to know that range. Know where the beginning of the punch and the end of the punch is. So as we start round number eight, we look at Teddy's scorecard. And Teddy, Glover's up on your scorecard. But even more significant than that, he looks completely fresh. There's no sign of him letting up. No, and I don't think he should let up. You know, this is not football where you go into that prevent defense where now the other team can come up the football field because you're not doing the same things to keep them defensive. You don't want that to happen with your opponent to start coming forward. Keep being aggressive. Keep doing the things that got you here. That was a miss by Raging Bull. Good defense just covering up down low. Back and forth they go, each man getting the best of it. Raging Bull's been able to let loose. He's throwing punches. He's just not landing enough of them. Well, he's throwing them from a little too far away. He's not getting into that punch. He's starting to launch him just a little too soon, and his opponent is warm. The halfway point of round number eight. Raging Bull's hit by a counter punch there. He takes a shot and then commits to giving one right back. Well off the mark by Clover. That's okay, that's okay, let it go. Let Raging it go. Bulls, cracked by a right hand. Oh, he's hurt right now. Oh, a big shot comes home for him. How about that? He goes from being the victim to handing out the punishment. You're three here. Oh, you are. You're in black track to get your hand. Get up. One. Get up. Two. Get up. Three. Hurry, get up. So now the question becomes, after that knockdown, and he has gotten up, how does he survive? So this is where instincts kick in. You got to start moving that head automatically right now. You don't want to stay in the middle. Last 10 seconds of the eighth round. Unable to make an impact there by Raging Bull. And that's the end of round eight. You can have the best game plan in the world, but when your eye shuts closed like that, everything changes. The one thing doesn't change, Joe, and that's the mentality of a warrior. You find a way. You do not give in. You find a way. You concentrate harder, and you see with that one eye what you need to see. A target on his head, and he places the hook right on it. Let's go, you got Targets his opponent after blocking a shot. Raging Bull's now feeling the effects, Teddy, of having his opponent punch right through that guard. Well, he should feel the effects of it. He is damaged badly there. He may hit the floor. Big, big shot comes crashing home. And once again, he goes down. The question is, can he rise up again? Five. So he is able to get up to his feet after that knockdown. But, Teddy, it's what's ahead that's the problem. Yeah, we're getting a peek right now into his heart, into his soul.
keep working his head. He was waiting for his opponent, just waiting for an opportunity, and he found it. The counterpunch by Clubber. Sending out the power shot, it was a straight left hand. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. Good right hand. Well-placed, well-timed combo up top. Not able to land the headshot. Fine-looking right hand by Clubber. And now he's targeting upstairs. Another good round by him there. Teddy, he can't miss tonight. No, I'm taking nothing away from him, but you can't miss when your opponent goes out there and begs you to hit him. I mean, he's just standing right there asking for it. Clubber's left now getting into the mix. He does a nice job with the uppercut, and I think fans, especially fans that like the big shots, the whole lots of offense, they love that power punch. Yeah, because, you know, it's something that comes out of nowhere. It has real impact. It has vision. Solid. That was a big shot that floored him, and it's a big shot that may end him right here. That looked like the great pitch of great Maddox. His sinker ball. Boy, it went down quick. Raging Bull's ability to get up from that knockdown has to be admired. But I don't know that this fight's going to go much longer here. Well, if he doesn't grab on, it's not. He brings a big power punch, and it landed well. Well, we've been talking about getting in his kitchen. He went in there and he ate everything. Oh, he is stunned. He could go down. Put him away. Put him away, champ. He's going around now, Teddy, like his legs are made out of wet noodles. Yeah, and my mother was boiling the water because she... Big shot. Can he beat the count? I don't think so here, Teddy. Now I know where they got that saying, falling like a sack of potatoes. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Get up. That's it. It's over. Fight is over. Lovers' corner is already celebrating. His opponent unable to beat the count. Now that's how you end a fight right there. Yes, he was controlling throughout, but he made a good, clean finish with the knockout. Yeah, as a trainer, you want to know, can a guy punch? Can a guy defend? You know, can a guy control?